Hi, today I'm going to try my lattice top cherry pie. I have that crisscross basket weave, which makes it a lattice pie. I have some smaller ones that I've made uh, in cherry and blueberry, and I made some other kinds as well, as you can see. I'll show you a picture of those within the video. We're going to be using Primo E-Crew colored clay. It is uh, E-Crew 5093. And um, what I'm using for the beads in the cherry pie is their 4 millimeter round red beads. Um, they're sitting in bottle caps. I figured it, since I'm making a pie in a bottle cap, I might as well measure out approximately the amount of beads I need uh, in the bottle cap. I'm going to use the Fimo uh, decorating. I'm going to use a, a one and a half inch cutter, a uh, round circle cutter. My bottle cap fits, you know, with a little bit of space around it, so I figured this would be just enough to cover the bottle, bottom of the bottle cap. You need your pie shell, you need your cherries, a little stick for mixing the cherries in the cup. We're going to put the cherries in the cup, and you really just need to coat it. You don't really need to make them soupy, uh, but you just want to coat the beads and get them all nicely coated. You see they'll start picking up onto the toothpick as you're coating them. I'm going to put them all aside. And you take your uh, Ecru clay, your pastry shell looking clay, uh, condition it very well. You just keep working it in your hands and keep working it until the warmth from your fingers and the warmth from your hand uh, start to help the clay and all the plasticizers in the clay get reworked throughout the clay itself. So it gets a little soft. Once you get a little bit of your clay if you want you could run it through your pasta machine several times get it even more malleable. You don't really want any air bubbles in it. Okay, so we, we got a pretty big piece here. And we're going to need some for the top, the lattice on the pie. And we're going to need, of course, the bottom of the pie shell. So what I'm doing here is I have my little square and I'm going to cut out my pie shell. So you have a nice round pie shell. And I'm going to push this into my pie and I kind of overlap it, but I'm pressing into the fluted side of the bottle cap, which is giving it the natural uh, effect. And as you rub it all the way around, you'll find that you can just rub the excess clay right off the side of the pie, uh, making it look very realistic like a pie. You take your excess clay, and we're going to mash it up. And I'm going to run it back through the pasta machine. Okay, so I have my piece there. We need to make holes in the pie so that there isn't any air bubbles when it bakes. So I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of holes in the bottom of the pie. And anyone who makes pie at home is going to know that, you know, it's always good to poke some holes in the bottom of the pie crust so there's no air pockets and whatnot later and, and it really helps the pie. And then I'm going to take the stuff, the beads that we mixed up with the Deco Art Gel by Fimo, and I'm going to put the beads into the pie. So you, you have your, your cherries, your little juicy cherries, and they're not going to go anywhere. Even if you decided to not put the lattice or a top on this pie. And I'm just going to try to turn some of the, the holes on the beads so that they're not going to show and they look like real cherries. And, and you can take your time and do that. And I'm getting them all in there and I'm making sure they're all pretty much coated. 
and I'm trying to pretty much cover those holes and just kind of so they don't show. And then take your clay that you rolled out. Again, this is now on the number five. I made it a little thinner to so stretch it out. I'm going to cut very thin slices, and I'm trying. I'm going to try to get them as uniform as I possibly can. I'm kind of cutting away from me, not towards me. Uh, but I, I want to cut maybe maybe about ten. Say about ten. Yeah, about five. One way five to just lay it on the pie and work on it as you go. Don't worry about pushing it down onto the pie yet. Um, just lay it out on the pie, but just keep working it. Keep keep trying to work at it, and don't worry about pushing it down as you work because you're going to be lifting it up and putting it back down. If you know how to weave a basket, or ever learned how to weave a basket, then you'll have an easier time of putting this together. And you can also use uh, like a toothpick or something to help you lift the pieces and place them onto the pie the way you need them to go. And little by little, you work your way around the pie till you get it completely done. I'm going to turn the camera off, I'm going to finish the lattice, and I'll be right back to show you how to complete your pie, finish it off before baking it. I've actually laid out four uh, of the lattice uh, going one way and three going the opposite. You could probably fit more. My lattice holes are a little big, but my cherries ain't going anywhere, so it really doesn't matter at this point. After that, the last step before you bake it is you want to take your soft pastel chalks or whichever kind of chalk that you use and you want to take a little bit of a brown color or a little bit of yellow or a little bit of yellow and brown uh, but you just want to kind of rub that all on the pie onto onto the crust to give it that baked look is I'm just basically breaking off the excess pieces of the clay. You can even do it with your fingers at this point because like I said those beads they're not going anywhere now or to look like baked crust. But basically that's what you want to do and then you want to pop this thing in the oven for the manufacturer's recommended temperature which I believe with Primo it's 275 degrees for 15 minutes I'm going to bake mine for about 15 minutes and I will replay the video and show you the end result.